Video Gamers Oasis. Website, YouTube channel. IV. Left hand passage. Biv, let's take the passage with all the footprints. It's obviously the most traveled path. Suits me, agrees Bivatar. The passage descends sharply, and in many places there are steps carved into the stone floor to make travel easier. At the bottom of one such flight, they come across the skeleton of an unfortunate adventurer. His bones picked clean by some car carnivorous denizens of the great underground empire. Lying next to the skeleton is an empty brown sack and a sturdy shovel. Pour a little glass of water here. I'm going to hang onto this shovel, says Jiranda. Might be useful, agrees Bivatar. Your score has just gone up by one point. Next page. N. Large cavern. Further along. Large cavern. Further along. The passage ends at a large cavern. A stream runs through the center of the cavern. At the water's edge stands a large stone hut. It looks deserted, says Bivatar, peering in a window of the hut. Good place to eat lunch, I'd say. What now? Enter the stone hut or avoid the stone hut. You come across the cavern and you find a stream runs in the center of the cavern. At the water's edge stands a large stone hut. Let's enter the stone hut, see where, what we can find in there. One. Stone hut. Bivotar and... Stone hut. Bivotar and Jiranda enter the stone hut. The entire first floor seems to be one large room. With a small wooden table and some chairs. <coughs> they sit at the table and eat a hurried lunch from the provision, provisions that Sayavar gave, gave them. Let's have a look around, suggests Pivotar. A brief inspection of the room reveals nothing of interest. However, a stone staircase spirals downward, indicating a cellar below. Warily, they descend the stairs and find themselves in a musty chamber filled with cobwebs. Wooden tables line the room, covered with many curious items. Scrolls of parchment, a stuffed owl, a rack of wands, and bottles of liquid and powder. Suddenly, Jiranda notices the talisman that Sayavar gave them. Biff, look at the amulet. It's beginning to glow. Sayavar told us that meant there was evil nearby. Bivatar examines the talisman. It's only glowing very faintly. Sayavar also said that if evil was close by, it would glow very brightly. Next page. N. Stone hut. Look at this. Stone hut. Look at this, Jiranda calls, pointing to a sign on the wall. The work room and its contents are the property of Grawl. Anyone who disturbs my possessions shall be punished. Didn't Sayavar mention that Grawl was a powerful and evil warlock? asked Jiranda. Yeah, I think so. Hey, look at this. Bivatar picks up one of the parchment scrolls. It's a spell for break speaking with beasts in their own tongue. That sounds as if it might be fun. He puts a scroll in his pack. Biv! Jiranda cries. The, the amulet is growing brighter. We better get out of here. 
But there are still a lot of interesting things here, Bivitar protests. Do you want to leave now, as Jiranda suggests, or stay and continue examining the Warlock's curios? It might be a, a, a wise choice to quit while we're ahead, to, to, um, to counter blessings and move on out of that stone hut before perhaps Grawl returns. So click one, leave now. One, small round room. Leaving the hut behind them, Bivotar. Small round room. Leaving the hut behind them, Bivotar and Jiranda wade the shallow stream and cross the cavern. At the far end of the cavern, a dark opening leads to another passage. They enter this new tunnel. The ground here is made of soft sand, slowing their progress. After walking a while, they come to a point where the passage widens to form a small round room. In the center of the room, painted right into the sandy floor, is a red X. X marks the spot, says Bevatar with a grin. What do you mean? Try digging there with the shovel. Come on, Bev. What would that accomplish? Who knows? It won't hurt to try. It'll just be a waste of time. What's your decision? Try digging where the X is, or forget the X and can continue down the passage. Your score has gone up by one point. Let's try digging the X. I want to see what's in there. There could be some buried treasure. One. Small round room. Jiranda shrugs. Small round room. Jiranda shrugs and hands the shovel to Bivatar. He immediately begins digging into the sand at the center of the X. You're just wasting time, Jiranda complains. Bivatar digs the hole deeper. The sand keeps sliding back into the hole, making his work difficult. Jiranda whistles a tune. Had enough yet? Jiranda asks. Several minutes later, Yeah, I guess so, says Bivatar, smiling. I don't think I'll find anything besides this. He holds up a giant ruby, still covered with wet sand. Gosh! You were right, Biv! Wow! Okay. Bivitar cleans the sand off the ruby and stows it into his pack. Let's get going. Wait, says Jiranda. Let's keep digging. There might be more rubies, or there might... She trails off, looking extremely embarrassed at her greedy outbursts. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, let's get going. Next page. And coal mine. They proceed along the passageway. Coal mine. They proceed along the passageway. Here and there, smaller passages branch off to the side. The walls of the passage are black and lumpy. At various points, wooden beams have been erected to support the ceiling. The passageway widens, and they notice a pair of parallel metal strips, like railroad tracks, running along the center of the passage. Duran, you know what I think this is? A coal mine. Duranda snaps her fingers. You're right. And by the look of it, looks of it, it hasn't been used in a long time. They follow the tunnel around a corner and come upon a car of some kind. It's four wheels mounted on the track. Most of the car is a large bin filled with coal. Next to the car is a strange sight, a wide doorway to a brightly lit room beyond. The room seems out of place here in the coal mine, especially its white polished granite walls. Sitting in the center of the strange side room is an even stranger looking machine. Let's take a closer look at this peculiar machine, says Jiranda. Oh, let's keep going, says Bevatar. What's next? Approach the strange machine or keep going? I wonder if I should investigate that. Let's investigate it. Approach the strange machine. One. Brightly lit room. They enter the brightly lit... Brightly lit room. 
They enter the brightly lit room with the granite walls and approach the strange machine. It is shaped vaguely like a washing machine, with white enamel sides and a large lid on top. The controls consist of one solitary button. A label on the front of the button of the machine, faded but still legible, says, Froba's Magic Compressor. Some fine print beneath the name is too faded to read. Try pressing the button, suggests Joranda. Vivitar presses the button. The machine comes to life with a dazzling display of colored lights and bizarre noises. After a few moments, the display ends. Next page. End. Brightly lit room. Brightly lit room. Interesting, but very productive. But not very productive, Vivitar comments. Durando opens the lid and looks inside the machine. It's empty, she says. Let's try putting something inside and then turning it on again. Like what? asks Vivitar, looking through his possessions. How about some coal from out there in the car? Jorinda leaves for a, a moment and returns with an armload of coal. She dumps the coal into the machine and closes the lid. Here it goes, Vivitar says as he pushes the button. The machine reacts as it did before. When the display of lights and noise has subsided, Jorinda opens the lid. page. And brightly lit room. Brightly lit room. <gasps> Look! She gasps, withdrawing a huge diamond. Wow! But of course, it's a compressor, remember? Diamonds are just coal that has undergone tremendous pressure. She puts the diamond in her pack. Well, let's get going. But wait a minute, says Bevatar. There's a lot of coal out there in that bin. We can make a whole bunch of these diamonds. That isn't what we came here for, protests Joranda. Do you want to get rich or to get killed? Stay and produce more, some more diamonds? Or continue into the depths of the underground empire? We came here on a mission. Let's find our friends. Okay, go to two. Two. Gray rocky tunnel. Bivotar and Jurinda continue to traverse the coal mine. Gray rocky tunnel. Bivotar and Jurinda continue to tra traverse the coal mine. After a while, the tracks disappear, and the walls become gray and rocky again. The air grows moist and at various points trickles of water run down the walls of the tunnel. Dark green mosses grow abundantly where these trickles appear, just beyond a particularly thick growth of mosses. They come to a small tunnel leading off from the main one. Bivatar shines a lantern into the small side tunnel. It is very short, forming a dead end 40 or 50 feet away, sitting on the ground just before the end wall is a wooden trunk bulging with jewels. Next page. And gray rocky tunnel on the floor. Gray rocky tunnel on the floor of the side passage between the trunk and two adventurers is a carpet of green plants. They sway slowly from side to side, which is rather odd since there is almost no breeze in the tunnel. Joran, look at the top trunk of jewels. Let's take a closer look. Wait, cautions Joranda. Those plant things might not be as harmless as they look. Once again, you have to choose where to go. Number one, go down the side tunnel to the trunk of jewels or number two continue along the main passage and on that note folks hi this is jeremy from video gamers oasis speaking this concludes this video game walkthrough 
make sure to follow my Twitch channel https colon forward slash forward slash triple w dot twitch dot tv forward slash video gamers oasis and chat with me while I'm streaming. I would appreciate your company while I play some more fun games like this one and engage in some enjoyable gamer and geek discussions. See you there! Video Gamers Oasis Website YouTube Channel